So we've been looking at partial fraction decomposition and up to this point we now know how to handle linear factors in the denominator but there's another possibility as well you might have a quadratic factor in the denominator we just need to know how to handle that real quickly so uh, so here we go um, if you have a quadratic factor in the denominator of your rational expression then each one of those uh, quadratic expressions is going to contribute a few terms to the decomposition now how many terms is he going to contribute well that depends on his power so if it was a quadratic to the first power it would only contribute a single term to the decomposition but if this power was two or three or four then he would contribute two or three or four terms to the decomposition now what do they look like well uh, kind of similar to the linear terms in the decomposition um, you notice how you have this uh, factor here that was in your denominator with an increasing exponent for each individual term in the decomposition but here's the here's the big difference though look at look at these numerators these numerators are not constants like they were when we had linear factors like an a then a b then a c or, or we called it a sub 1 a sub 2 a sub 3 a sub 4 etc they're actually entire linear expressions now one way you can re remember this difference is the the fact that the numerator has a degree one less than the denominator so if it's a quadratic your numerator would be linear or if your denominator is linear your numerator would be a constant right it's always one less than the denominator right but anyways you contribute that many terms um, matching whatever your your power is for your quadratic and the denominator all right so let's try one let's let's see if we can do this okay so here's a rational uh, function and we're going to try to decompose it and so the main step the big step is writing the template of what this decomposition would look like so here we go I'll write equal so f of x is this and I'm going to decompose it in the next line all right I'm going to have a few different terms based off of what these factors look like in the denominator all right I've got this factor in pink and I've got this factor in green and I'll, I'll do them separately all right let's start with the pink factor all right, is, is this a linear factor or, or a quadratic factor? Well, it's quadratic, which means in the decomposition, he'll contribute uh, some of the terms in the decomposition. Now, how many? How many will, terms will he contribute? Well, look at his power. He has a power of one, so he's only going to contribute one term. Right? The denominator will be x squared plus 9, period. Right? No, nothing else. Now the numerator has to be linear since that's a quadratic. So we'll write ax plus b, right? Some mystery linear term here, right? Uh, now let's move on to the second term here. Uh, now you, you might look at this and say, okay, x minus 2 quantity squared. Well, I guess that's a quadratic. It's actually not considered to be a quadratic. When, when we say quadratic, we mean the, the base of this term. So just the x minus 2 is considered to be linear and we would call this technically a repeated linear factor but because it's squared so it is repeated but it is the same linear factor repeated multiple times so this is actually the previous case from the last video so how many terms will he contribute he will contribute two terms so we'll have uh, one term here and then another term here all right now what are the denominators well again that has something to do with that power as well this would be x minus 2 and the next terms denominator would be x minus 2 squared right and if it was to the third power you'd have x minus 2 to the third and then you know so whatever this power is these powers and these denominators successively work their way higher and higher until you match whatever power you have listed here all right now what are what are its numerators well these are uh, linear factors this was a linear decomposition and uh, and as I said just a little while ago a tip that I would recommend is your numerators are always one less degree than whatever this factor is so if this is a, a linear factor then this would be a constant I've already used a and b so I'll use c and uh, matter of fact the rest of these will be a constant so this will be a d uh, this guy's numerator would not be uh, a linear expression because the factor again is linear yes it's repeated but but the factor itself is x minus 2 so the numerator would just be a constant 
So you just keep tacking on new letters, you know, along the way, right? Uh, one last thing I'll mention before I let you go. What if, what if this uh, was not x squared plus nine to the first power? What if it was to like the second power or third power or fourth power or something? Well, then you would have more terms like this, where the first term would be x squared plus nine, but the second term would be x squared plus nine squared, and then the next term would be to the third power, so on and so forth. You'd have a, a number of terms here. And then you would just keep making up different, uh, different expressions, linear expressions for the numerator, ax plus b, and then for the next one, cx plus d, and then ex plus f, you know, so on and so forth. So you have these new linear expressions uh, in each of your numerators, okay? So now, what's the purpose of this? Why are we doing all this? What, what's the ultimate goal? Well, what we're eventually gonna look at coming up soon is um, taking uh, these big, ugly, rational expressions that we have here, right, these big, ugly, rational expressions, and we'll try to integrate them. This is a, uh, in calculus. And so if we're trying to integrate this big, ugly function, we have no integration rules for whatsoever, wouldn't it be a lot easier to integrate this and this and this independently? I think it'd be a lot easier. So that, that's the underlying reason we're doing all this stuff with partial fraction decomposition. All right. So now that we're progressing and uh, learning how to do partial fraction decomposition, now we'll move on and, uh, and tell you how you're going to actually figure out these specific uh, numerators, because they're still mystery numbers at this point, the A, the B, the C, and the D. Next, uh, coming up, we'll talk about how to find those.